Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following lemma. Every Cauchy sequence of real numbers is bounded. Now first, let's remind ourselves the definition of a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. It goes as follows. Given a sequence of real numbers, xn, we say that xn is Cauchy if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer h such that for all positive integers n and m greater than h, the absolute value of xn minus xn is less than epsilon. Now, the definition of a bounded sequence of real numbers is as follows. Given a sequence of real numbers xn, to say that xn is bounded means there exists a positive real number capital M such that for all positive integers n, the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital M. So our goal is essentially to prove that every sequence of real numbers that has this property also has this property. So we're trying to prove a statement about every Cauchy sequence of real numbers. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary Cauchy sequence of real numbers. We'll call it xn. The goal is to show xn is bounded. Now to start, since xn is a Cauchy sequence, this means we know that this first statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number 1. So taking epsilon to be 1, we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer h such that for all positive integers n and m greater than h, the absolute value of xn minus xm is less than 1. Now to proceed further with our proof, we are going to prove the following statement. We can show that for all positive integers n greater than h, the absolute value of xn is less than 1 plus the absolute value of xh plus 1. And proving this will help us prove that xn is bounded. So let's prove this. And to start out, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than h, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than h. I'll call it n. Now we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every two positive integers greater than h. So in particular, we can take n to be the n we have here, and we can take m to be h plus 1. If we do that, then we have that absolute value of xn minus xh plus 1 is less than 1. And by the triangle inequality, we know that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of xn minus the absolute value of xh plus 1. So we see that this is less than 1. And if we take this inequality and add absolute value of xh plus 1 to the other side, we see that absolute value of xn must be less than 1 plus the absolute value of xh plus 1. So what we see here is, given any positive integer n greater than h, it follows that this is true. So we have proven this claim. OK, so now let's consider the following set we'll call s. So our set s consists of absolute value of x1, absolute value of x2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to absolute value of xh. In addition, it consists of 1 plus the absolute value of xh plus 1. Now, it's pretty clear that s is non-empty and finite. And if you recall, every non-empty finite subset of real numbers has a largest element. So we'll call the largest element of S capital M. And our claim is that this choice for capital M 
will allow us to show that this statement is true, and thus proving that xn is bounded. Well, to show that, we first need to show that our choice for capital M is greater than zero. Well, we know that capital M is the largest element of S, which means capital M is greater than or equal to every element in S. So in particular, capital M must be greater than or equal to one plus the absolute value xh plus one. And we know that this is greater than zero. So capital M is greater than zero. So this shows that our choice of capital M is greater than zero. So all that's left to show is that our choice of capital M makes this turn out true. So we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers, so let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it n. From here, we want to show that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. And to show this, we're going to break this up into two cases. Either n is greater than h, or n is less than or equal to h. And in either case, we're going to show that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N. Let's start with case one, where n is greater than h. Now, in this case, we can use the fact that this statement is true. Right, we know that this statement works for every positive integer greater than h. So in particular, it must work for n. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this is true. And we know that one plus acid value of xh plus one is less than or equal to capital N. And this tells us that absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital N, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So this completes case one, now let's move on to case two, where n is less than or equal to h. Well, in the case where n is less than or equal to h, the absolute value of xn must be one of these guys. So the absolute value of xn is an element of s. And since capital M is the largest element of s, this means capital M is greater than or equal to every element in s. So in particular, capital M must be greater than or equal to absolute value of xn. In other words, absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital M. And that is exactly what we wanted to show. So we see in either case, the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital M. So what we see here is, given any positive integer n, absolute value of xn is less than or equal to capital M. So we have shown that this statement is true. So we have found a positive real number, which makes this turn out true, namely, this positive real number. So we've proven that this is true, which proves that xn is bounded. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.